Phil? Hey, Phil? Phil? Phil Connors? I thought that was you. Hey, don't say you don't remember me, because I'm sure as heck if I remember you. Ned! Ryerson! Needle nose Ned, Ned the head. Come on, buddy. Case Western High. Ned Ryerson, I did the whistling belly button trick at the high school and talent show. Bing! Ned Ryerson, I got the shingles real bad senior year, almost didn't graduate. Bing again! Ned Ryerson, I dated your sister Mary Pat a couple times until you told me not to anymore. Well, sometimes when you do a job, you can feel like Phil Connors. And it feels like it's Groundhog's Day and everything is the same. I don't have any heat on the passenger side of the journey right now. So I'm thinking that half of the heater core is blocked. Common problem on these apparently. But I really don't want to replace the heater core. So we're going to try and drain and fill and flush. And we're going to clean out as much crap out of the system as we can. And it's going to feel like Groundhog's Day because I'm going to do the same thing a bunch of times. So hopefully in the end we're successful. If not, I have a much bigger project on my hands. Let's get started. The problem we're having with the cooling system is our temperature. We're getting warm air out of here and we're getting cold air out of here. I've already pulled down the glove box and checked the blend door actuators and it's no difference. It's uh, working properly. We're definitely getting hot air on one side of the car and not the other. And as you can see, temperature set all the way to high on both sides. If I drop this all the way down, you can hear the actuator change. The air gets even colder. The air stays hot here. Bring it back up to high. You can hear the air change. It gets a little warmer, but it's not, it's not enough. I mean, there's a pretty big difference. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to drain the coolant. I don't see a petcock valve anywhere for the radiator, so I think we're going to take off this lower radiator hose. We put our lower radiator hose back on, got out our nasty coolant. Looks like maybe it's oxidation from the aluminum or something in the heater core or just somewhere in the engine that I'm guessing is contaminating the coolant. Refill it with water, we're gonna run the engine, get it up to temperature, get the thermostat to open so we can get the rest of the coolant out of there, and then we'll drain it again and put it in our flush. Car's sitting at about 167 degrees, so we should be getting pretty warm air, uh, right about at normal, and we're not. We've got it back up to operating temp. I shut the car off. We're going to drain the coolant again and see if we can get some more nasty stuff out. Then we're going to put in our engine flush, see if we can break up a bunch of the crap and get more out. We re-drain the coolant again, uh, getting a little bit lighter, so a little more water. And I'm going to try and disconnect one of the uh, hoses that goes to the heater core itself and see if we can get something out of there, maybe put a little air into it. All right, so let's see what happens when we get that off. <clears throat> Alright, so we don't have anything. Let's see if we can add a little air to that. So what I've concocted here is an air gun nozzle to a hose, to a fitting, and in one of the uh, heater core pipes. Let's see what we get to come out of the bottom. Here's where we're at. I've drained it twice out of the motor. And then I put water in back up top. We we'll the system up there by our thermostat. Um, let's go inside the car and see what we're getting heat-wise. We're getting 86, 87, and out of the other, we're getting 85, 90, 84. It's hot. I mean, it's definitely pretty much as hot as the other one, so maybe I got lucky. It'd be really awesome if just a flush made all the difference. But I'm gonna drain it one more time. I'm gonna put in some coolant flush and we're gonna clean out the system and see if we can get it any better. I've hooked up the air hose again and we're gonna push some air through the heater core. I'm not sure which way that's going. I think it's going through the, the top and we'll see what we get out. That was some pretty good stuff. Lots of white and foam. Um, so let's put in that cleaner. So what I'm gonna use for the cooling system to try and flush everything out is this Prestone engine cleaner. Uh, it's a cooling system cleaner. Everything else at the store seemed that it wanted to either be a stop leak or give excess cooling for things that run hot. 
but we'll give it a try. I put the entire contents into the reservoir. We're gonna fill the rest with water and run it for about 15 minutes. Let's see what comes out. Well, I'd like to think that our coolant flush is working. We're at 96 on that one. We're at 100 and, uh, 100 even, roughly. Right in where you aim it. Drain it again. See if we get anything good. Hot coolant. Oh, that is hot coolant. While we're flushing everything, I took the upper radiator hose off and I'm going to flush down through the actual radiator on the top, let it go all the way through the radiator, and we're gonna see what we get out on the bottom. So what we're getting is kind of some foam. I don't know if that's from the cleaner itself, but it is running out clear now. Okay, so we have our upper radiator hose on. We have our lower radiator hose down here on the bottom, uh, wherever it is. Down there, reconnected. I did take off this upper hose for the heater core and blew air in there so that it could force air through the heater core and back out to kind of blow out some of the crap thinking that kind of made quite a bit of difference i did not go to the return line and reverse flush it i just did straight air through the way that it's supposed to go um, and we're going to refill our reservoir with our 50 50 mix You can see the level of coolant is right down here. So we're gonna add a little bit more, but we're gonna start the car up. We're gonna bleed the system. I have the front end of the car elevated up on jack stands, which is a requirement because you wanna get that to be the highest point above everything else. Our heater core is nice and low. We have our radiator, but we've gotta get where we're putting the coolant in at the highest spot so everything bleeds off. Now, when you're trying to fill the whole system up, make sure that you have your heat on full blast. And you want the temperature at the highest. That way it opens up your water valve and it circulates all that cool. It's gonna take a minute for us to get some heat and filling our upper radiator hose. But we're gonna open up the bleeder valve here. And see, we're gonna let some air out. And you see we have a few bubbles there. <coughs> and once we get some coolant flowing, we'll know that we actually have water coming out of the engine. As our coolant level continues to drop and feeds in to replace the air in the engine, we're gonna keep adding more and more coolant to keep it up so we don't suck in extra air. We wanna keep it right at that level that the bottle has on the outside for maximum. So we've closed up our cooling system, sealed it back up so it can build up pressure. Now, any of the bleeding that we do, we're gonna do from the top of the thermostat housing. Crack it open a little bit, see if we get some air out like we are. And then we're getting pretty steady streams. A little bit of braking. We're gonna tighten it back up. Let's go see if we have any heat inside the car yet. So we're getting 103, 102, and we're getting 95, 99 out of the passenger side. And they feel pretty equal, so I'm guessing the flush definitely did a trick. Well, who doesn't like a good success story? I know I do. And I'm glad that the heat on the passenger side that was non-existent this morning uh, when I ran to the store uh, is there now and we have good heat. So I don't have to replace a heater core. I can take it out of my rock auto cart, which is a relief to me. And uh, I'm gonna call it a success. So give it a little bit of time. We'll see what happens. Maybe it clogs up again. I don't know, but Hopefully this video helps you out. Figure out how to flush your cooling system, whether you have a Dodge, whether you have a GMC or anything. Try something simple before you try and go to extremes because tearing the whole dash out on this is a pain in the ass. So, appreciate you taking the time to watch. Hit like, hit subscribe, and from Ned Ryerson, do you have life insurance? Because if you do, you could always use a little more. Am I right or am I right? Right, right, right. See ya.